seconds. Let that ad work its way through. Oh, there was an ad. I went live. Damn it. Oh, man. I the algorithm. Oh. Oh, wow. Well. You broke it. That's all right. Hey. We are back, finally, with another episode of Blood, Sweets, and Laudanum with a bunch of the Notorious DMG crew. As you notice, there's a stock Zweihander image down in the bottom right-hand corner for Blort. You can all boo him and give him a thumbs down because he's the reason we're late. Um, he's, he's stuck at a way station right now, looking at a guy with a pole. Was that what his message said? someone's inspecting his truck oh right right so i like the pole thing more yeah, let's go with that a, he's looking at a dude at the pole uh <laughs> is that a gay strip club you know let's hey, just come I, out and say uh, yeah. <laughs> i don't know what's going on but anyways he's the reason we're, we're late we're behind tonight so i apologize we had to do some behind the scenes magic to make this look the way it does so we're down a person which is going to be a little awkward because he was the big instigator uh of where we left off last time when we played three weeks ago so we'll see how that goes um let's go ahead and do introductions we'll start with chuck to my left chuck who are you where can people find you what do you do hey uh i am chuck the one and only from the defenders of cobalt uh you can find me at the defenders of cobalt where we run uh actual play games mainly uh we got a zweihander ca uh campaign going right now Yep. called uh death's reformation and if you pay attention you might realize that i have just reskinned a uh current and popular D, &D campaign so yeah Ooh. exciting shit that's me oh and i'm playing kozel the uh the forest hippie who yeah, just right. died uh on the show you guys streamed before this Oh and yeah, an alternate like, reality. literally, like right before yeah. this. Yeah, yeah. I'm gonna put that. Thanks, Chuck. Let's as I fix their Twitter handles. Let's go down to Steve in the DM. Hello, everybody. I'm Steve in the DM. You can occasionally find me on YouTube. You can always find me on Twitter. Uh, I make uh, videos and I tweet uh, once a month. And <laughs> I will be playing Waldo Lanis, the barber surgeon. Uh, my motto is to cut twice and measure later. Hey, when can I expect to see a new video from my favorite uh, D and D advice uh, channel? I uploaded one just a week ago. You didn't watch what? it? What? Apparently not. Jeez, you gonna... were my biggest fan until then. Shit! All right, I failed you. I failed you, Steve. Man, I'm sorry. I'm uh... just kidding. I didn't upload one. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I literally grabbed my phone. I was like, oh no. <laughs> Oh, uh, okay. Soon? I, was I think when we played soon. last, we soon. played three weeks ago, you said there was one hitting right away. Soon. There was supposed to be one hitting right away. I actually just changed my whole office and green screen so that uh, it's easier for me to film and to stream live like this. Before I had to set up a temporary desk in front of my green screen. So, so maybe we'll I've see you doing some streaming on the Notorious DMG channel in the near future. Uh, that would be a very pleasant thing. I hope to do some on Saturday. Oh, moving oh. on, Bert. <laughs> moving on to Bert. What's going on, Bert? <laughs> hey, I'm Bert. This lab on the inner tubes. I run a little channel called Of Steam, Steel, and Murder, a podcast, not video, because, you know, faces only mothers can love. <laughs> <laughs> He's analog. <laughs> I'm playing Sandow, the magnificent, the most beautiful ogre you'll have ever laid eyes upon. It's true. It's true. It's true. Random rolls, folks. Mm. Random rolls. <laughs> okay. Who wants to do a recap of what took what took place last session? Man, it was messed up. The whole beginning was interesting. What do you guys remember? You remember you're on a road. You're on a highway. Well, actually, you start off um, in town. Last adventure. Yeah, uh, right I had a mansion, and you promptly took it away from me like a horrible GM would. That's uh, what any good GM would do. <laughs> Give it the take we it away. loaded up the wagon with alcohol and with my shiny new sword. And uh, it, it wasn't long before we were traveling through a storm. And you basically said that we had to abandon the wagon. And we said no. So we fought to save the wagon. And I believe it was Kozel who uh, pulled off some really uh, fantastic uh, spellcasting that no one even noticed. It was some stealthy oh, spellcasting. Yeah. 
Uh, uh, you knocked out the big bad guy. Uh, and that caused everyone else to run away. So you literally saved our butts, and we have no idea why. But he cast a spell, or but how? I distinctly remember a certain barber surgeon going over there and, like, also nailing their fury. I thought he had a heart attack. I thought he had a heart attack. So yeah, I was trying to... What, like, you're, you're, Open heart you're surgery is what I was... exploded, like, twice or something ridiculous on that guy. Did it not? I stole his kill, is what happened. I stole his kill stole, uh, under stole. the guise of trying to help him. Because you got a, <laughs> you, you like rolled an injury and everything. You got a, yeah, you got yeah. a crit, or it exploded, and you rolled an injury. So, and then, uh, yeah, the rest the rest of the, the mutant people ran up. Well, there was like one with his eyes were on stalks, and there was one with tentacles for hands, and there was like mongrel men that were there, and yeah. And that was our first like real fight. Uh, we got in a fight. Uh, during the last adventure but it was really like okay we're all gonna die so let's just try it out and uh this was our first one that we wanted to live through so i'm kind of proud with how we did we really came together as a team <laughs> we all lived yeah yeah, yeah. Uh, who wants to take the story from there well uh we found a gonna... small uh small inn perhaps, that had a uh, walled uh, fort around it. Yeah. Barricaded door, which uh, Sandow knocked politely, um, as in he kicked open the door. Uh, and we Beat went the inside. Crap out of it. You rolled everybody, pretty good there, too. You, you rolled a crit, I think. That. Yeah. I did. I did. So uh, everyone is inside the inn, whooping it up, having a good time, and uh, Thought something looked a little suspicious, so we checked out a barn. Right, a barn where there were dead, dead people stacked. A, uh, a, yeah, or um, sure, we'll call it a barn. <laughs> <laughs> a stable, right? Yeah, yeah a stable. stable. There we go. Lots of dead people in there. All were uh -oh. beyond my saving. I did my best. Yes. Uh oh, my roll twenty just crashed. Uh oh, that did not happen last time. Yeah. <laughs> I'm going to keep keep talking. I'm just going to change the scene here as I get back to roll 20 so people aren't watching me type things in and my passwords and such. Go ahead. They can still hear us. They can't see us. So uh, so we tried to steal some horses and get out of there. But uh, one of the people from the inn came out and uh, we, we talked him into, hey, we're, we're just trying to round up your horses here. Your, your barn door open. We don't know why. <laughs> <laughs> as yeah, right. we get down from the horse <laughs> yeah there are horses that were one scared in the stirrup <laughs> scattering and going nuts and who was uh who was the horse whisperer that calmed them down was that kosal oh yeah that was me yeah yeah i'm pretty sure he fed them some magic mushrooms that's uh Mo most likely yeah <laughs> just be cool man like take these mushrooms <laughs> Did I get down from the roof? I remember being up there looking for the monster. I don't yeah, remember. There was a monster. There, there was, was chewing on uh, the corpses. Yeah, there was a blood and a corpse up on the uh, the second uh, story up in the hayloft. And it uh, was like an octopus spider monster, right? Yeah, it had, yeah, 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 exactly. And you went up onto the onto the um the roof. Yeah, I poked my head out. And you saw this uh, thing and it hissed it. I did not see it. Uh, someone else saw it and said it was there, so I poked my head up and did not see it. You said it was hiding. Okay, someone went around the other side. Maybe that was Blort. That was that was Blort. 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 That was Blort. And Blort was also screaming at the uh, the road warden, who eventually came out of the tavern to uh, to talk to you and see what the commotion was outside. Blort was screaming at him about uh, Sandow and to give Sandow respect or something. I just that's all I remember. Sounds about normal. Yeah, it was a wild ride. Uh, and then Blort decided to head outside of the walled enclosure where there are mutants and weird creatures currently that were chasing us. Yeah. All about, cause he wants to go see, Hey, there we go. We're back with our image. He wanted to see what was happening outside. He wanted to chase the spider octopus creature in the storm. Oh, that's right. I had like a storm sound playing the whole time. Ooh, fancy. Did I, not, did I not have that last time? I thought I did. This is high budget oh, here. Oh, oh, oh. Oh, yeah. Um Hey! Hey, we're being raided by Featherfall! Hey guys, thanks for uh thanks for raiding us. Yeah, thanks for coming through. 
That's awesome. We're just getting started. We're super behind. So you guys showed up right in time. You haven't missed anything other than the recap. Sucks that it was, yes. <laughs> hey, thanks for the raid, Featherfall. Alright, so. Let us begin. Blor Blort is absent tonight! Blort is... Blort is the reason we were starting late. <laughs> See, I told you Blort has his own fan club. He has a following. And he's Blort2020. And he's not even here. Are we not good enough for the rest of you I guys? Know, right? Like, Blort no, no is, we're not. Blort is absent, <laughs> everybody. Please don't all of a sudden just leave en masse finding out that Blort is not here tonight. <laughs> all of a sudden, our yeah, the viewers just poosh, plummet. No, he's here. He's coming, guys. I, I swear. Just, just wait. Um, he's off self harming tonight. He's he's good. He's good. <laughs> Someone will have to pick up the self flagellation to make up for it. Yeah. Right. Okay. Blake, Sam. No, don't leave. <laughs> don't leave. We'll we'll do our best to make up for Blort not being here. All right. So let's pick up where we left off. So Blort is heading outside of the little enclosure here in the storm and the rain and the night. To go chase down this spider tentacle creature. And uh, what are the rest of you doing? The, uh... Well, we have one warden with us, right? That uh, still warden. hasn't seen the creature and doesn't believe there is one. That's right. He saw the bite marks, though, on the corpses. He did see that. He did. He did. Um, yeah, and we warned him that there were a bunch of mutants outside of his gate. Uh, but now the gate's wide open with a blort out there. <laughs> so Wide open. Thank you for the subscription. RPG Dad, we got a new subscriber. Thank you so much. What a guy. Uh so yeah, let's uh let's go let's go find Blort. Actually, there is no front door. I'm remembering that now because I kicked it down. <laughs> there is no front yes, door. You, you kinda did. like propped everything back up. There's also a yeah. side door next to the um the stables where you're at. <laughs> oh, that's not a door. What am I talking about? There is a door to the south of you. In the rain, in the rain and snow, in this dark, stormy, thunder-filled night. All right, let's get into this. We've got the sound effects. So Blort is running, scurrying around to the door that you you tore down and and makeshift built back up. And um, yeah, are you guys just gonna let him run out there? He's shouting and screaming that you will respect uh, Sandow. He is a beautiful man. I'm going to stay near Sandow, and uh, this fear and rain is starting to sober me up, which means I'm going to stay near the guy with the muscles. Well, unfortunately for you, Sandow is uh, going to go after Bort. <laughs> Never mind. I'm not. No. Uh, <laughs> no, I, I will I will follow Sandow with a uh, generous distance between us. I'm going to say you're, you're easily able to, to uh, close the distance between you and Bort as he's shouting and screaming... Uh, and marching his way towards the door, and he's trying to open it up. Uh, and he's getting, you know, bogged down by the, the mud and the rain that's piling up in the courtyard area here in front of the tavern. And you've got the, you've got the road warden. Oh, hey, don't, don't open that gate. We already dealt with already dealt with bandits at one point tonight. Don't let that little crazy one open the door. I'm afraid there's worse than bandits out here this night. Um... So I'm going after Blort, but I'm keeping an eye out for our, our mutant friends out there. Sure, so you're at the gate, and you're kind of like calming Blort down, because he's doing all of this in your honor, if you remember <laughs> correctly uh, from last session, Sandow. And we'll say you're, you're able to calm him down, you're able to soothe him. Um, <laughs> and you guys have also, you've calmed the horses down, you've put them back in the stable, so the, the warden... Hey, you might as well come in, have a drink, a bite to eat, and stay in here for the for the night. There's no point in going out there and risking your lives. Don't mind if we do. Don't mind if we do. Yeah, man, that sounds good to me, because, like, Blort can take care of himself. I'll just give uh, a final Blort! Alcohol's this way! <laughs> if you got drinks, I don't know who Blort is. <laughs> Blort who? All right, so he welcomes you in, and you guys finally enter inside of the tavern. And inside, it's there's a fire roaring, and it's nice and warm in there. But it's it, it's absent of any uh, any 
any folks or any guests, it appears. It looks like there's a there's a very, very large, like, morbidly obese man behind the counter of the bar. And uh, he looks you over as you come in. And uh, kind of gives you an eye and looks to the warden. Uh, Hortons, who, who are these? Who are you letting in here on a night like tonight? Uh, don't worry, we, 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 we. It's terrible. They were chased by mutants and such. We can we we, we should let them stay. I'll okay. slap some coin down on the table and I'll say, "You look like a man who enjoys food. Good food, I hope." <laughs> His eyes open up wide. Oh, your money's good here. And what do you have? You have any chicken? Sure. I want two whole chickens. Two whole chickens. Fried. And dry toast. Yeah. <laughs> and dry white toast. And a glass of water. <laughs> Isn't that it? Uh, sure, fried chickens. It's a little late for that, but... Because uh, remember, you guys are traveling through the night. It's probably, oh, midnight, one in the morning at this point. All right. Wouldn't you rather have a bed? Isn't it a little late for fried chickens? I'll put another coin on the table. Oh, we've traveled long and far, and my friend here requires sustenance. Surely, you could scare up a bird or two from back there. Preferably two. <laughs> yeah, fine. He, you hear him shout out, "Boy, boy!" And this this head pokes out from behind a door, which looks like it leads back towards the kitchen area. And uh, you see this this young man. He looks like he's in his early twenties, and he has a really distinguishing feature. He's got these big, bulbous, bulging eyes, and he, he, they're just like you. You can't miss them. Hey, what, what, what do you want? He's, he shouts at him, Oh, we need two fried chickens! And they kind of banter back and forth about it being late in this hour, but uh, eventually the uh, the gentleman behind the bar convinces him to uh, to put those chickens on. Uh, Sandow, it, it sounds like they're going to forget your toast. <laughs> yeah, man, like, they only care about the chickens. Well, <laughs> liquid bread will do just as good. <laughs> Get a... <laughs> Get a round of brew for every. How many other people are in the room? It's the the group of you, I guess. Well, the four of you, if we're counting Blore to his absent tonight, plus the road warden and uh, the landlord of this place. That's that's all that's in here. And then the boy that you saw darting in and out of the kitchen. I'll wave the warden over and come and join us for a brew. Yeah, he kind of saunters over and looks you looks you all over and. Oh, I, I suppose I could partake. He sits down. Tell us the about group. these uh, ruffians you yeah. encountered earlier. A group of bandits. We let them in here, yeah, and you know, we we let them in out of the rain, like the group of you, and they tried to rob us. But uh, I know my way around a blade, and uh, we took care of them, lads. Take a good look around. Yeah, <laughs> it's like, is there much here that's worth robbing? Uh, well, you 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 don't know how much money there might be here, so you yeah you're kind of like hmm. You can go. Everybody can go ahead and make me a a, a challenging scrutiny uh, awareness test. Actually, challenging. Okay. No, we'll, we'll make it scrutinize. We'll make it scrutinize. Let's see, scrutinize, huh? All right. I don't oh, scrutinize eight, much. Six. All right, so you guys aren't able to pick up on on much. You're just kind of you're cold and you're wet and you know you're just you're happy to be in somewhere warm and you've got some beer and you've got some food being uh being made for you. So he he sits there and you guys are sitting at like a long table. Uh, with benches, and he's sitting at the far end of one of the benches, and he's just kind of sitting there, sizing the group of you up, not saying much. I'll just size him right back up. <laughs> you just stare at him? How does he like it? I keep his mug full, see if it loosens his tongue a bit. Um. <laughs> he has to talk first. <laughs> he nods to you? Oh, appreciate it. 
miserable weather out there. We're caught in ourselves. I'm glad to see this place, but uh, I gotta say, there's more out there than just robbers tonight. Yeah, we uh, we came across some people who they needed help. They were having heart attacks left and right, and you know, you try to do what you can, but there's not much you can do. Mm, yeah, yeah, man. They were really ugly, man. They might have died from that. I mean, I tried. Yeah, I see, I see. Hey, you're lucky you survived, especially on a night like tonight. Uh, while you guys are chatting, you, you notice that the, uh, the landlord behind the bar has gone and grabbed a, a mop and bucket and is, is mopping furiously behind the, uh, behind the bar there. I feel like we should investigate that, but by my scrutinized check, I'm not sure I would have noticed. Sandbell's pretty <laughs> tall, so, I mean, can he just look over and see what the floor yeah, looks like? Yeah, you just like? kind of lean over, and you notice that there's some blood stains and marks back there that he's mopping up. It looks like some fresh blood. Oh, my God, guys. <laughs> Good they news! Are the they bandits. just butchered your chickens. <laughs> <laughs> they are the bandits. No, man, it's just, you know, fresh, never frozen, man. Ans, Ans notices you peering over there, Sando, and goes, Oh, yeah, we, well, I said we had to take care of the bandits tonight. This is a little bit of remnants. We're just doing a little cleanup job here. Like I said, stash them bodies up in the A-loft. Now, we did get a look at those bodies, right? You saw one. Yeah, it was chewed, right? It was gnawed on. You saw one no, we, body. I thought we saw more than one, so we no. only saw the one. He, they, they told us one, that they had more. But he claims right. that he t killed two. There was two bandits. What was the one dressed in? Oh, just common common clothes. Common clothes. But not a uniform, like a warrior no. would be dressed in. No. Thinking back on it, did the clothes fit? Um, you were, It was in a like, a, like a mask just lying on the ground. And the clothes were a little torn from whatever was also in there chewing on it. Fair enough. So it was hard to say. Well, Sandow's tired from carrying that cart <laughs> for our trip. So he's enjoying food and the drink. Uh, apparently so he, not very aware of things. You guys, you, you killed the bandits behind the counter. And then you put them in the barn. But then why'd you start chewing on them? You ask, who are you asking this? Yeah. To the warden? Yeah, to the guy that's mopping. Oh, to Otto. What are you talking about? Ah. Huh? I'm, he's we, kind we of like, saw he's, him. He was like, and totally we saw someone chewed him. Engrossed in his mopping. He looked, what? Huh? Huh? What I, I mean, something, something chewed him, right? Well, no, we saw the thing that chewed him. It was on the roof. You were following it. I didn't see it. Oh, Blort. Blort, Blort, Blort saw it. <laughs> Blort, who's not here tonight. <laughs> Blort did see it. And, you know, Sando, I, I, I really... I, I think he just makes stuff up for attention sometimes. So, like, I, 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 I think you guys... You just got hungry? Was that it? Uh, you guys aren't eating people, are you, no. man? Why would... What? Yeah, That's... I mean, you have chickens, so, like, definitely just let the yeah. people go. Not... Eat chickens, not people. We're not eating yeah. people. Yeah. What, what... Well, he, then he what looks is? Over, he looks over the world, world warden. Uh, I'm not comfortable taking more in tonight after what happened. Perhaps we should we should send them on their way. Whoa, 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 whoa. I, I, I'm not going anywhere. This place is warm. All right, I just want to know why you were chewing on that guy in the barn. The guy had teeth marks all over him. The warden, he kind of leans at the group of you, and he looks you over, and he goes, ah, I think your sudden appearance has unnerved the landlord. Mind you, you could be right. Who else will be out on a night such as this, huh? Well, I mean, you don't have to worry about us. traveling and got caught in the rain? We're not the ones that are eating people over here. Yeah, <laughs> man. I'm Episcopalian. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Friends I eat fish, I too. I do come from a long line of man-eaters. That is true, but it's been a generation or two since we've done that. Yes, uh, 
I don't know what's with the law to you, but uh, perhaps it's best to eat, you sleep, and you move on in the mornings. Agreed. Some more drink first, I think. Yeah, sure. You get another Bottoms round. Up. And as you're having that round, the, the lad with the big bulging eyeballs scuttles out from the kitchen and brings two whole fried chickens and some dry white toast. I, I'm just going to start going to town and I'm going like prison style where I'm like hunched over it and looking over my shoulder, <laughs> just making sure no one takes any. Uh, I want to ask the kid with the eyes, like, hey, man, can you, like, see everything with those? He, he, his eyes turn without his head even moving. No, his big bulging <laughs> eyes. He looks, what do you, what do you, what do you mean? Man, your eyes, like, they enter a room first, man. <laughs> oh, you're so mean. What? Why are you making fun of my eyes? Oh, no, no, my good lad. It's admiration. It's admiration that he's speaking of here. Yeah, man, like, sometimes I don't see so good, man, but I think you probably always see really good. Oh, what's this condition? Why are you making it? He scuttles back towards the kitchen, and he's very upset. Because will never learn to make fun, not to make fun of people with disabilities. Uh, with that, uh, auto, <laughs> auto, auto, uh, behind the bar, well, the, the landlord behind the bar, excuse me, and he, he scuttles off with the, the bucket of blood and kind of chases after the boy, uh, back into the kitchen area, and you can hear them kind of talking away back there. In between bites, I'm gonna be like, they're not gonna eat that kid, are they? I hope not, man. He's got it hard enough as it is. Is there a fire going? There is the, a fire, uh, fire roaring, forest? yes. Right, so <laughs> go behind the counter, fill up my uh, stein again. <laughs> nice. <laughs> and uh, uh, go sit by the fire and get my clothes dry. Sure, you get nice and close to the fire. Um, Hans, Hans is eyeing you up the whole time. That's the that's the road warden. He introduced uh, his name's Hans, and he's he sits over by the fire with you, and uh, meanwhile, the landlord and the, the boy are back there in the kitchen. They're having a conversation, so it gets a little a little loud at times. Can we hear what the conversation is? Not really from where you're at. Hmm. You can get a little closer and try to listen in. Eh, I, I'm not into other people's drama. Yeah. I have a hard time hearing, man. I have to flip to fail on ear checks. <laughs> <laughs> sure. So, you guys are sitting there. Some of you, some of you are by the fire, by the road warden, Hans, and he's sitting there, kicked back, and he's just watching the group of you. He's not saying really anything. And then, uh, is, I, go ahead. Is he armed? He is armed. Yes, he is. He has a what has he got on him? Oh, a sword? Okay. Yeah. I'm just chowing down on my chicken. Oh, okay. <laughs> Sandow still has that massive two-handed sword that he uh, really has no place to put since he doesn't have the scabbard for it. So Pretty sure that's to... my sword. Pretty <laughs> well, sure that's yeah, my sword. Yeah, but I'm holding it for <laughs> you. <laughs> so I, I'm just like casually laying it wherever I sit. He's like, got no better place to put it. <laughs> so I'm sure <laughs> that's a little menacing. <laughs> Yeah, after a while, um, the landlord, he comes scuttling out, and he's got four bowls, two two in, in each arm, he brings out, and he places them in front of you, and he goes, uh, uh, we, we got off to a bad start here, uh, complimentary, uh, custard to, as a dessert after that meal for you, and he drops a bowl in front of each of you. I mean, if I'm done with my chicken, I'll just start digging in. All right. How's the taste? It tastes delicious. Um, what color is the custard? It's not red, is it? <laughs> no, it's, these people are like killing people and eating them. So it's it is it is uh, is yellow custard. Um, okay, but uh, yeah, as you're eating it, you can go ahead and you can make me uh, a challenging scrutinize. I'm gonna fail that. Yep, 
failed. Ah, it tastes great, and you're just chowing down on it like nobody's business. The rest of you have these bowls sort of in front of you uh, as well. And he's standing Guys, there. this is really Look, good, especially if you eat it with chicken. He's looking it's very just delicious. He's standing there, like, just watching as you eat it. He's like, oh, you enjoy it? You like it? Oh, yeah, yeah. Especially when it's free. Free makes everything. Yes, nice free. <laughs> free. Eat up, my, my friend. Does he seem a little too excited? <laughs> yeah, he, for seems, us to he, be... seems, he seems, like, really excited. What he's makes like, you think that, He's Chuck? just hovering over Walden <laughs> Walden. Wald Wald Walden Alanis, and he's like, oh, yes, <laughs> this big, it's, giant... It's been fun adventuring fat, with you guys. Man. Morbidly obese man. It's like he could almost roll, he's so big and large. Just these two tiny little stubby legs. <laughs> yes, eat, enjoy. Uh, I want to ask the dude, hey, man, is this like a, a banana custard or a vanilla custard? Uh... It's more of the vanilla variety. <laughs> He's laughing. Oh, man, that's too bad. Like, I'm allergic to vanilla and stuff, man. Oh. Sandow's having flashbacks to his childhood when he had to pimp out custard-filled donuts for his family. <laughs> <laughs> he just kind of pushes the bowl PTSD. far from him. <laughs> oh, are you are you not hungry? He kind of, he like, oompa loompas over in your direction, waddles over. <laughs> I mean, if you don't want it, I'll eat it. I'll take it. That's really good, guys. I'll slide my bowl over. You can have it. <laughs> Perhaps you should try a bite before you pass it on. <laughs> uh, no, he slid it over. I took it. It's mine. Oh. Eat up, little one. Are you sure none <laughs> of you would like to try my special No, no, no. Bring them all over here. I get all four. I get all yeah, four. Yeah, man. Like, not when you call it your special custard, too, man. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I mean, it's a house specialty. <laughs> uh. I'm just going to start working on the second one. When I finish that, I'll start on the third one. Uh, and yes. I'll break out his pipe and his pipe tobacco and offer some to the warden. Clueless uh, as to what's going on here. <laughs> yeah, he takes you up on the offer. Uh, yes. <laughs> and I'll grab, grab Bradley smoke some of that. So, um, you got you eat your your custard and you're smoking, and the uh, the landlord goes, uh, "Can I show you a room for the night? It is quite late. I'm sure you're you're tired and you'd like to get out of these wet clothes." I'm good I mean, with we that, could man. do that, but like, yeah. do you have more custard? I don't. Well, you ate all of it. Well, uh, yeah, I guess I should just take a nap then. Uh, uh yes, yes. If you have a bed. A few beds. It would be worth. Ah, I have a, uh, worthy. Yeah. Very worthy. I'm by myself very, very tired. All ah, right. Okay. Uh, let's just follow me upstairs. And he starts, uh, he heads to some stairs leading to a second floor. And he, you know, he mounts that first step. And it's like a, a monumental task for him. And he's huffing. Oh, uh, oh, okay, please follow me. And he slowly makes his way up the stairs. And uh, brings you to uh, the second floor, uh, where you're greeted by a, 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 a long hallway, and there's doors on either side. And he says, "I have a, I have a common room which is big enough for all of you that you can stay in for the night uh, here at the end of the at the hall." C -c -c common room. I, I'm the hero of Vorberg. <laughs> well, hero of Vorberg, it seems we're the only people in this inn. The common room would be a fine accommodation. <laughs> well, I mean, like. Do you have, like, curtains or something that can, like, give me my own space? Because, like, I just... Visually, I need my own space. Ah, uh, the other rooms are occupied tonight. Uh, this but is all I have left. You don't have, like, curtains? I mean, maybe even, like, just blankets that you can hang from the no. ceiling or... Uh, no. Sandal like, takes his cloak off and just covers you with it. This is the best I can do. <laughs> and I am now <laughs> drowning in an ogre's, ogre's cloak. <laughs> given the late hour. I'll just curl up under the cloak. That's fine. <laughs> yeah, tabletop keyboard, you are notorious for getting banned by my Nightbot. I've let up on Nightbot a lot. Toss a blanket over him like a parrot. Yeah, that's right. Like a parrot. Um, I'm so just going to, like, are... roll in it a couple times sure. until it, like, bundles me up into a burrito. You guys are, yeah, so as he's bundling up, you, you notice, though, as in this hallway, as you're doing this, that it's wet. It's wet and it's uncarpeted. And um, 
just looking at it, you're you notice that there's like bits and scraps of carpet um, that looks like it, it 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 should be here. Like there are chunks where there are carpet. And there's a piece where there's like carpet missing or removed. Hey man, are you like remodeling or something? Ah, yes, uh, one of those those bandits. He uh, he made, he he fled up here and. Uh, we had to mop up his blood, and we cut out a section of the carpet. <laughs> As I drift off to sleep, I'm going to say, these guys are really suspicious for some reason. Oh, yes. this will be fine. Thank you. Thank you. So, yeah, he takes to the end of the hallway, and he opens the door to this, this large common room, and there's some beds in there, enough beds for all of you. And you guys kind of scan the room, and you see that the room is, like, dirty and... The bedding is soiled and kind of tossed around, and it looks like it has not been cleaned since the last people were in there. And he goes, "Oh, have a good evening." I mean, I've seen worse. Yeah. Uh, yes. At least I'm sober enough to make it by this. <laughs> is there a window in this room? There is a window. Uh, as he Rawr. closes the door, you also hear behind him the clear sound of the door being locked. From the outside. Does the door open into the room or out of the room? It opens into the room. So, so the I'm gonna our look side, around. Yeah. yeah, I'm gonna look around for the best bed and uh, just make myself comfortable there, and sure. uh, pull up Sandow's cloak. And yeah. as I just, like, sink into this horrible hay that's not comfortable at all, I'm going to say over to Sandow, like, maybe you should just move a bed in front of one of those doors so they don't eat us tonight. Because they, they don't really have any good food other than custard and chicken, and they just like to eat people. So, like, just a, a bed in front of the door. The, uh, uh, what were you talking about? I um, actually didn't intend on staying in this room. It seems like we have a window that way. I think Perhaps we should leave. Um, leave? But we just got to bed. We just got to bed. Well, no, you're, you have terrible stomach pains right now. It's like stabbing pains <laughs> in your stomach. I really need to sleep, guys. I know <laughs> my stomach is hurting horribly. I think I drank too much. I find a pail and just put it next to him. <laughs> you're, the room is spinning. Your head is pounding. And, yeah, uh, I'm not leaving. I'm not leaving. Just, just don't let him eat me. Don't let him eat me. Oh you, God. Oh God. This is horrible. Oh God. You feel absolutely terrible. The room is spinning, and <laughs> you're ready to just throw up. You have. Oh my God. Um. 18, <laughs> That's not good when the DM starts laughing. Eighteen points of peril. Uh, peril. So that's your mental. Uh, that breaks the first peril threshold. So you go, it goes too deep because you have 19, don't you? I'm looking 19, at it right yeah. now. Yeah. So you go down two tracks on the peril track. So I ignore two skill ranks? You sure do. <laughs> Woohoo. And um, yeah, you start vomiting uncontrollably. Better out than in. That's what Mama always said. Hey, man, we better open up that window. Uh, and you actually don't take that much physical damage from the violent, uh, vomiting that you are currently <laughs> experiencing. Seven points? Where does that put you? Seven points of physical damage. Oh, it's enough to do one, take you one point down the damage, uh... So I'm lightly track. wounded. Yeah. So he's throwing up and vomiting, and the room is spinning, and he's got a pounding headache. But Waldo does not seem to be complaining too much. Oh, I'm too busy throwing up. <laughs> you don't know if it was the chicken, the toast, or the custard that did it. But you seem I didn't to be have the any only the toast. one who's sick. I didn't have any of the toast. <laughs> oh. They all drank the beer, but you only had, uh... <laughs> you think I drank too much? I've never drank too much before. I don't know how to handle a little more. <laughs> <laughs> well, from one end or the other, he's going to fill this pail. So I'm going to land right here. <laughs> 
I'll do my best to get it in the pail, but no promises. So, Kozel, you know we're going to be attacked tonight, right? <laughs> See, as I... <laughs> yeah, man. That's, uh... Something is definitely afoot here. We, uh... Sneak well, out the window and try and go surprise them, or do we just wait for them to come to us? <sighs> Well, I think our friend here isn't going to move very far, so let us barricade ourselves the best we can. So the door opens in towards us, right? So that's yeah. good. Um, I am going to take several of the heaviest tables I can find, uh, kind of jam them up to the door, and then go check out that window to see what can be done about that. Sure. So you head over the window, and as you're there staring out, and it's still pouring rain outside, and it's pitch black, but with the sudden crack of lightning, you see... The landlord, the big morbidly obese landlord, making his way slowly through the uh, through the courtyard and over to the uh, stables where you at before. In the rain, he's carrying a lantern, and he's in there for some time. And he comes out, and uh, he's he's talking. He's got his arm around, and he's talking to somebody or something and again with another flash of lightning you see this strange grotesque tentacle spider creature that he's conversing with and he's pointing up at your window in the room and talking to this thing all right so we didn't light any uh lanterns or anything in here so our room should be dark to them sure um, what else is in here you described some beds what else there's some beds there's like a uh, like a couch to lie on. There's uh, chests to put your belongings in, but not much else. There's like a a a a, a, uh, a chest of drawers on the top of it. There's like a little bowl for like washing your hands and your face and all that. All right. I can't really contribute to strategy, guys. But if it does come to a fight, I'm going to be useless. So just throw me in one of those chests and lock it. Um, are there lamps around? There are lamps in this room, yes. Okay, so is there oil? Yes. <laughs> I don't like right. where this is going. <laughs> so I really taking, like where this is going. <laughs> I'm taking several of these. I'm going to take a chest, one of the larger ones, and put it at the base of the window. So um, <laughs> I'm going to fill it with a, you know, a decent amount of oil. And nearby, I am going to you know strike a strike a flint and just get a very small amount of flame going in a in a lantern so that it can be quickly pitched into that uh, chest full of oil uh trying to hide it such that if something were to come through that window they wouldn't see it right away and maybe step in it and light that bitch <laughs> so <laughs> gotcha all right so you're setting this up and you're shoving and pushing things around and you're setting it all up um and yeah you've moved away from the window and you're just kind of sitting there in the dark waiting? Just waiting. Yeah, so we jammed the door closed. Yeah, he pointed at the window. Kozel, uh, any tactics that come to mind? Uh, I'm going to get my jar uh, of animal fat, man, and I'm going to get my fingers a little slick, just in case, man. Just in case. Uh, we in got case the... of what? Like you need to do some probing? or? Yeah. <laughs> 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 What are you lubing your hands up for? For everybody's comfort, man. <laughs> Can't have too much lube. I assume you're not doing this, like, publicly. You're just kind of, like, sticking your hands in your pockets, and there's, like, lard in there or whatever, fats or whatever you yeah. got. Absolutely, yeah. Puts on gloves. <laughs> yes. <laughs> <laughs> That's it, exactly. You have gloves with, lined with lard. In lube. Yeah. All right. So, yeah, you're sitting there, you're all waiting and waiting. I'm not waiting. Yeah, you're vomiting uncontrollably. Like, he's nonstop just puking over in his corner on the bed. And you feel terrible, Waldo. Um, Two chickens worth and four custards worth. Yes, and whatever beer you drank. There are now two buckets next to him. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. They're, yes, they're filling fast. And, you know, as you're watching the windows, slowly this, like, tentacle with its suckers presses up against the window and you see this like grotesque spider head 
with many eyes looking, just kind of peeking up and peering through the window and looking into the room. And I mean, we don't have to see that. We could just be all looking away yeah. pleasantly. Under, when we, we looked out this window down at the guys walking across the courtyard, was there any kind of like awning or anything on this or is it just straight wall up to our window? There, There is an awning. Yeah, there's an awning uh, above the... Uh, like, because it's two stories, so you'd have the first story, and then there's an awning, and then the second story on top of it. Good question. Okay, so this dude could be standing on that awning. Could be. Uh, upon seeing this thing peering through the window, you're all going to take seven peril damage. If that affects you, if that goes down your track at all. Do I see it? Because I'm, I'm, my head's in a bucket. Um... <laughs> You're throwing up pretty badly. Yeah, you're not really paying attention to what's what's going on around you. Right, unless can you the others... um... Seven's also not going to be over your track. It has to be over. It doesn't have to meet. Yeah. Okay. So wait, explain uh, the peril threshold to me. It's, it's been a while. So that's your, your mental capacity. Uh, let okay. me bring up your character sheet here, Sandow. So what... mine's 6, 12, 18, 24. So you went one over. So that means you're going to go one point down the, the peril condition track. So you're going to okay. go from unhindered to imperiled. I just okay. clicked it and filled it in for you. So you have no negative or ill effects going on at this point. If you start to take more mental stress, then you're going to start to get, like, ignore one skill rank, two skill ranks. That's what Waldo is currently going through right now as he's vomiting uncontrollably. He is now, he ignores two skill ranks in any skill when he rolls it at some point because he's taken so much mental stress. I just do my best not to use skill points or or any skills at all. Hmm. Does that affect Kozel at all? No, Kozel's good. It doesn't doesn't go over threshold, so he's fine. You see this thing peering in with these many eyes when the lightning whoosh, cracks behind it, and it starts to hoist itself. Another tentacle arm with the little suckers whoosh, goes up on the glass, and this thing hoists itself up even more, and you can see it's got like a half-man face. The bottom half is almost like a human mouth, but it's got the, the top part has these spider-like eyes covering the top, and fur and hair and it's peering in the room and trying to get a glimpse of anything so how do so we so just we, uh... nope right out of this situation <laughs> <laughs> so Sandow and Kozel uh, setting this trap and we've kind of put ourselves like so that you can't see us from the window but we can see anything coming in you're in the dark I'm gonna roll yeah. for its awareness it rolled pretty darn good peering in the room and looking at you guys uh, do you want to roll um your stealth checks. I will give it to you because it is dark and you are actively trying to hide. I will give it to you as a easy roll. Your stealth. Am I easy as well? Because I'm really not focused on you're, stealth. You're, right? you're not. You're not trying to oh, hide. You're the bait. You're just we want him to You see are you. the bait. Yeah, you're not yeah. trying to hide, Waldo. Okay. You're just okay. Ah, okay. Ah. So I'm not rolling. All right. Okay. So it does not see you, Kozel. But it's, oh, so it sees you. You're just too big. It sees you got Sando, too many muscles. I don't know, standing behind a, a dresser or something. <laughs> just, like, clearly standing there. Andre the Giant trying to hide behind a lamp. Yeah, <laughs> I'm holding a shrub pot in front of me. <laughs> <laughs> so, it sees you looking at it. And it uh, raises one of its arms again, and it starts to pull its arm up and as it's doing so the window starts to slide open you can hear the storm clearly now and the rain starting to come in and it lifts itself self up into the sill and into the room i give it the uh the one-fingered salute that uh bridges all language barriers (laughs) does it step into the the chest of oil that we set as a trap yeah it's it steps down and yes, the chest is there. Oh, oh, yeah. I, uh, cack handed grasp. Cack handed grasp. Which does? Tell everybody what uh, cack handed grasp it's does. It's going to, well, since, uh, Old Believer gets to yep. cast it as critical, yep. uh, he drops anything he's carrying and falls prone. Yep. <laughs> Into the chest. <laughs> so it's not carrying anything, but it just, it all of a sudden, uh, Whoop. this thing just, like, screeches and drops down to the ground and it, is, it has the prone condition on it now so can we say it falls into the chest the rest of the way uh like it's ha- part way in part way out all right well anyway the lamp goes in now <laughs> so, 
so let's go ahead and you're going to roll to get that lamp in there. Uh, sure. Let's do a simple ranged, and I'll give it to you as, uh, as an easy as well. We're going to do some damage. We're going to do some burn Yes! <laughs> nice. All right, so you toss this lamp in there. There's a dumpster fire. <laughs> and it hits its target, and all of a sudden, whoosh! The flame ignites the oil that's in there. And this thing ah, ah, is tossing and turning and screeching. Uh, we have to do burning damage. Chuck, off the top of your head, do you know where that is? Because I know it's a special. Oh, fuck. I don't remember where it is. Burning it's going to be its own thing. Yeah, it's going to be... Uh, they need to make a coordination test. Well, they'll take damage from it to begin with. Yep. And then they're going to take a coordination test to see if they catch on fire. <laughs> oh, he catches on fire, and 86 is not going to pass. And this then, is why we bring you, Sandow. It's, uh... It's a lot of... Like, burning it's, is... It's D10s for damage. Freaking deadly in this game. It is, like, ridiculous burning. It is OP if you can light someone on fire. So D10, and there's also a D6 Fury die in damage because he's prone, right? Yes. Uh, so roll me a, a D10... Sando. Wow. Oh. Only a one. Roll and roll a d6. Alright, not bad. Five burning damage. So this thing is ignites on fire and is screeching and tossing and turning about and it's completely ignited. Even though it was wet, it come in from the the rain and was slithering around out there and it is completely ignited and screeching. Uh and it uh it it uh lurches towards the window and just kinda like throws itself out back out of the window and into the rain. Well that's rude man like and you, you have a burning chest <laughs> in front of the window. I just look up from my Kick bucket for a second, it. wide-eyed, <laughs> and then go back to retching in my bucket. Yeah, just toss the chest out after it. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, so you go there to the chest, and you throw, you heave this thing out the window, and you see this thing, it's down in the mud on the ground, rolling around, uh, putting out the Oh, fire. can I try and hit it with the chest? <laughs> yeah, you can try and, and aim the chest at it as you toss it out the window. Um, let's go ahead and we'll do another, uh, simple range, but this is going to be much more, uh, this will be a hard to hit this thing accurately in the, in the rain. Thank you, tabletop keyboard for the fire rules. 263. Oh, yes! <laughs> nice. All right. You throw this thing out the window and it lands on top of him. Let's do, roll, uh, roll me a D6, Fury Day. Oh, man. If you were ever to burn a fortune point for uh, an exploding D6, now might be the time. So yeah, what, you what does that do? Explain that. Uh, what it does, you burn a fortune point. Uh, yeah. We should uh, have a pool of four of them. And it yeah. turns your D6 roll into a six, which okay. explodes. So then you can roll it again. Sure. Can we say that? And just add yeah. the four I'll, to it I'll, for I'll a burn one of the fortune and turn it into a misfortune. <coughs> and uh, yeah, roll another D6. Oh. oh. Burn oh. another one. No, you can't burn nah. another one. <laughs> but is it on fire again? <laughs> Oil-filled chest on fire just mm. fell on it? <laughs> it is in the pouring rain. But water <sighs> on an oil fire... No, it is not. <laughs> it passed its coordination test with an 8. We'll say <laughs> his time. But, uh, the, so the, the chest comes crashing out of the window and you heave it Sando and it l hits bam square onto this thing and again it shrieks ah! and it starts to scuttle away it scuttles towards uh, the wall and uh, climbs over the wall the and disappears palisade? into the night we'll let Blort deal with that one man yeah <laughs> <laughs> yeah what's Blort up to we haven't heard from him recently yeah I don't know he's asleep <laughs> Blort's asleep <laughs> Everybody's here for Blort. Alright, so. The window's wide open. The storm is crashing outside. The rain is pelting and making its way inside the room. It's starting to pile up uh, the Let's base close of the window. The window. <laughs> yeah, you close the window and 
the uh, you, you look out the window. The chest is lying out there, and the the fire is slowly starting to go out as it's like being smothered in, in the mud. The spider creature was blort. Yes, the spider creature was blort. He finally the corruption took over. I haven't been handing out corruption this episode. That's okay. That's okay. So, what do you guys want to do now? How am I feeling? You're feeling terrible. You are. You're still vomiting. You. you oh okay. man! You well, took, solves that. You took four Ooh. doses of this. It, it is. It is uh, amazing that you are currently not uh, passed out, incapacitated at this point. You well, they so say it, the more you do, the better off you are because you puke it up faster. Well, like if I only took one, it could poison and kill me. I but I took four, <laughs> so I'm just throwing it up instead. Your your logic is is flawed. But it worked for Napoleon. Time. It worked for Napoleon. Keep feeding me poison. <laughs> You're not Napoleon. He took ten times the amount of poison he needed because he thought it would take ten times to kill him. You and he Napoleon. lived because he took too much. So I am Napoleon. I, I'm the same height. I am the same height. You're not wrong. Uh, <laughs> all right. Yes. So what would you like to guys like to do at this point after you saw the landlord... Uh, sick the spider creature on you. Well, like, we're kind of trapped. Uh, we could try to get out of the room, but to what end? It's still storming. Yeah. Mob of mutants are still out there. As far as we know, they could be in league with this rotund innkeeper absolutely we but could try we to wait if we wait much longer they may come in force yeah we could try and sneak out the window yeah i think it might be our best bet sneak um, out the window grab some horses right off there you go everybody go ahead even <clears throat> even you uh waldo make me a uh a routine uh eavesdrop test Eavesdrop. Where is yeah, that? Eavesdrop. Oh, I found it. Uh, Waldo passed uh, over top you of... You guys hear that? So, uh, so did uh, Sandow. Passed. Uh, now, mine is flip to fail. Oh. Because I have the... Is it 32, the you still passed. Back? Okay, I'll take that. You still passed. Wow. Nice. Um, They're being really loud. Yeah, so you can hear someone outside the door. They're tr you can tell they're trying to be quiet, but they're making a lot of noise. They, they, they kind of tripped on uh, where the carpet was removed and began again. They, and they kind of stutter in the hallway and, and continue on. And then you hear them stop outside the door, outside of your door. Oh, man. And they're just standing there. Is there a large gap along the bottom of the door? Oh, yeah. Uh, I want to dive down and look under the bottom of the door. <laughs> And I want to put my fingers in my little jar of animal fat. And I want a cat handed grass. I just imagine this old man diving to the ground <laughs> with his hand in this, like, fat, this lard. Kozel, you are a treasure. <laughs> you know, they done turn those horses to glue. You're not wrong. Yeah. Uh, sure. Yeah, you can. You can, you can see I, a, a pair of feet. Yeah, I just got to see them. And then I'm going to see more of them as they fall down. Yeah, so it, <laughs> it, it happens. And critically, uh, you damn old um, little... Hey, Matt. Boy. Yes. <laughs> well, if I hear him hit the ground on the other end, uh, now maybe used to this happening around Kozel, uh, Sanda will also dive to the ground and shove that long-ass sword through that <laughs> gap. <laughs> Sure, so, Kozel, you dive to the ground, and you do your cat kind of grasp, and there's all of a sudden a thud! And, uh, you can see a figure lying there next to the door, and you're looking through the big crack, and you see, like, part of a face. And, and what you really make out is one big bulging eyeball on the part of the face that you see. Man. Poor kid, don't, sell, don't kill him. Make that kid a pirate there, Sandow. And Sandow 
dives to the ground and is going to try and run this kid through. All right, so go ahead and let's make an attack. Um, Sando, give me your, your simple melee. And you are going through, like, a slit under door. It is, it is wide. It's not, like, tiny. But still, this is not going to be an easy thing. We'll do a, a challenging... Any kills you get with my sword count as mine. Just yeah, okay. oh. Oh. <laughs> Do you want to use a fortune point to re-roll? No, nah, not on this. That'll okay. scare the hell out of him, hopefully, though. So all of a sudden, you drop to the ground. And uh, remember, he's prone, so you're going to do extra damage. Are you sure you don't want to re-roll? I don't want to waste it on this kid, no. Not that I know it's... Uh, you know what? Uh, let's be fair. I don't know it's a kid, so yeah, I'll do it. It was Kozel who saw the big bulging eyeball. Exactly. I don't know what it is, so yeah, yeah, I'll do it. That poor kid. Yeah. He already had a hard enough life. <laughs> so what does that do on a you, failed roll? You get to re-roll your attack, and you have to take the second roll, whether it's a crit fail or whatever. I'll take that. Ooh, yeah. <laughs> wow. Ooh. You only have a 37. Wow, you are not built for combat. Corruptions and Not at all, no. So you jump, you fall to the ground, and with that, you slide this big blade forward and right into this kid. Uh, go ahead and roll me damage for your sword. It was be, a, what is the damage for that thing? wasn't it? Two-handed. Like, I gave yeah. you. It's for this, you'd roll 2d6 plus your combat bonus. Yes. Right, and combat bonus is... It should be a three. It might uh, be it's higher. It's a four for me. Yeah, yeah. it's a four. Because you're a big boy. 12 points of damage. One of those sixes came up. Ooh, roll another six. Yep, and add it on. 16. 16 damage. Holy crap. That poor kid. Yeah, yeah. so you slide the sword under the door, and uh, it, it connects, and you run whatever's on the other side of the door right through. The sword goes right through them. And you just hear a... Ah, ah, and he didn't blood deserve that. starts to kind of pool under the door. Oh, and man. And stops moving. Hey, man, like, I think you hurt that kid. Well, he was never going to amount to much, let's be honest. Yeah, he was real ugly, man. <laughs> yeah. Oh, All man. Those, what's going on over there? <laughs> yeah, so there's no blood pooling from under the door. Well... Yes, Kozel, I think uh, we need to make our exit. It's beginning to feel a little tight in here. Uh, I'm just going to wrap up my cloak with Waldo in it, <laughs> sling it over my arm. <laughs> <laughs> he's dry heaving at this point. There's nothing left in his stomach, so he's not really throwing up okay. anything anymore. At least he won't make a mess on you. You pull your sword out from under the door, and the yeah. head just clinks onto the door <laughs> as you pull. I'll go yeah. open the window. Yeah, you open the window and the rain is pouring down and you guys want to uh, to make your escape out that way? Yep. Yeah. Guys, I, I think you should know I'm really not feeling that good. We will do, because you're stepping out into the rain and you want to try and keep your, your balance. We're going to do a coordination yeah. test. Ooh, which is an advanced one. You don't need that from me, right? Uh, you're being carried. Oh no, it's not. Yeah. No, it's just a Vance written before. It's not. Uh, it's not a little. So, it's what's so... the difference between coordination and athletics? Um. <laughs> Good oh, <yeah>. question. <laughs> well, I would put coordination as more since it's an agility type score. It's more balance based. Okay. I, that would be my guess. Yeah, I I, I read that as well. It was athletics under brawn is more like feats of strength and yeah physical okay. prowess yeah. well we're on the second floor right? you are on the second floor but there is an awning remember so that he was standing right. on but uh so the floors are what 10 feet 12 feet they're like 10 feet so you're okay. gonna it's basically to keep your balance and not slip 
Well, I'm, I'm wanting to make this as easy on myself as possible. Aren't you like um, seven feet tall? I exactly. I'm tall, so I just want to grip the edge of the window and just lower myself and then drop. Are you just gonna like toss uh, Waldo? No, I'm gonna hang on to him down. <laughs> Gotcha. Okay, so you want to do it nice and slow, but you want to. Ha okay, so if you want I'm to hang on to Waldo, and drop. <laughs> you want to hang on to Waldo while doing it. Then I will have you make an athletics test to sure. not drop Waldo and or <laughs> fall yourself. So go ahead and make me a challenging athletics test. Sorry, Waldo. <laughs> Waldo's gonna come crashing down. Um, Ooh. and. Kozel, you're going to make me a, uh, a challenging coordination roll initiative. We're fighting the ground. Apparently. And we're going Ooh, to two. I passed mine, though. Nice. The old man makes it out there. No problem. Down to the ground. He slides down. He uses. He, he watches what you didn't do and learns from it. <laughs> Don't right, carry so... Waldo. We're doing falling damage on Waldo. I trusted you, Sandow. I trusted you. Oh, man. I could be looking that up, too. I don't remember. It's on 262. I found it. Okay. Uh, okay. Okay. I'm not... I'm, we're going to take it a little... I'm not going to go too hard on you here. It's not that... Because there is an awning. You're basically falling down, boom, onto the awning, and boom, then down to the ground. So you're only doing, like, a 10-foot drop. Really? Uh, so, I'm gonna do this. Fifteen points of damage. Ooh, Ooh man, That's... GM killer over here. Uh, you could blame Sando for this. You rolled the die. Oh my goodness. Fifteen. So where are we? So. You've got a 7, a 13, and a 19. No, that's your that's I your believe mental. I'm incapacitated. Oh, my God. We get to roll for injuries? <laughs> oh, no, no. Injuries. Damage, that puts me 3, so I'm grievously wounded. Well, it doesn't. How much damage did that do? Was it 15? It did 15, so he's got a 3, a 9, and a 15. So it does the 3 and the 9. Yeah. Oh, okay, so just 2, so I'm You're seriously. You're seriously wounded. Ooh. So I landed on the sword or something like that. I probably landed on you, honestly. <laughs> yeah. Um, so that's two chances to be wounded. Or, yeah, isn't oh. it? Moderately and seriously, is it not? Yeah. So go ahead, roll me two d6s. Let's do see. Do I have to? I won't, I won't do it this time because I rolled a 10 you blame me. So I'm going to let you roll to see if you get... Ah, oh, you're fine. You don't get any injuries. You didn't roll a six. You're good. Are you wearing armor? No. You think okay. I can afford armor? Okay. Have you seen how good of a surgeon I am? Yeah. <laughs> no armor on Waldo. Yeah. Um, so Waldo is lying there in the mud moaning on top of dry heaving now. Ah. <laughs> <coughs> 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 I'm just gonna pick him up. <laughs> just, I don't even. I don't even know what to say. You guys are killing yourselves. You know, mutants and <laughs> and things on the side of the road. You you kill, you critically kill, no problem. But when it comes to climbing out windows and such, and eating poisoned custard, you know, you do it to yourself. Who owned the Twitch had a good idea. Am I aware enough to be able to perform surgery on myself? <laughs> you're pretty rough shape. You could do it, but I give you some pretty big negatives because you're. You need to rest. <laughs> Would I be able to amputate the spleen? Because, like, the spleen has to come, a come out when someone's sick like this. Am I aware enough to be able to do that to myself? In the pouring rain, in the middle of the night, <laughs> poisoned and... Okay, I'll wait. Physician, I'll wait till, please do I'll wait not till heal the myself. No. I'll wait till the morning. <laughs> oh, man. I'll go over and get into the stable and get some horses. Yeah, the, the horses that you guys put in there are, are in there. Uh, get, uh, you take a you take a horse each. Yeah. Uh, does Waldo <laughs> seem like he's in good enough condition to? I'm still carrying Waldo. <laughs> we have no okay. idea. If we don't look in the bag, we don't know if he's alive or dead. He's the okay. Schrodinger's Waldo. <laughs> I'll grab three horses. Schrodinger's Waldo. <laughs> I'll grab three horses. And one of them will be empty for now. 
All right, so you guys mount the horses. As you're I mean, little... we we do still need Blort, right? Yeah, we'll, we'll say Blort is, is he's, it's here. He's here. <laughs> he's still napping in the room upstairs. <laughs> you guys, you guys get the horses, and you can you see lights flashing inside the house, and all of a sudden you hear a terrible, horrible roaring noise coming from inside the the inn. <laughs> like Time an, to go! An unearthly, <laughs> ungodly roar ring out from yeah. inside it's time to go <laughs> it's time to go real fast <laughs> mount your horses and take off into the middle of the night yes but what about our cart our carts are cart. we just leaving our cart that had yeah. all the alcohol in it you drank all the alcohol but what about all the rum uh, <laughs> what about the cart? what about the mutants on the outside of the walls what about uh, the rum we gotta pick our battles. Let's, yeah, I'm going, man. Oh, uh, That's good. tabletop to keyboard said that since I have peril, my heel would be flip. Oh, never mind. He's talking about you, steel. You, you, my bad. And and if you do roll the heel, it's gonna be like arduous right now. You're in no condition yeah. to even yeah. try and heal yourself. You should. I don't even know where my bones are. He says you should really moment. totally try it. <laughs> <laughs> Please try it. Let's see what happens. It's an arduous <laughs> difficulty and a flip to fail. But I have so many good skill points that I can't use because of my perilous. Don't worry, man. Like I can heal you and stuff later, man. The chat wants you to <laughs> wants you to try this, Waldo. You I mean, I would, road, but I would also bitch. like to be in the next session. So, <laughs> you know, I have to balance that. <laughs> All right. So you guys break out into the night. It is oh a couple of hours have passed. It's like three in the morning now, and you guys. Leave into the rain. You're exhausted. You're tired. One of your companions is heavily drugged and injured and just moaning. <laughs> Man. But you guys are riding and you don't see the same things on the sides of the roads. You don't hear the sounds of things running beside you or alongside you. It almost seems like you're in the clear at this point. And you keep on and you keep on through the night until until the morning breaks. And... Uh, Dawn, dawn light comes up and you guys are heading down the road and you're still going on as, as hard and as fast as you can. The rain has started to let up and you come across a group of four road wardens coming down the road in your direction. And as you get oh, closer, man. one of them, they're all on, on horseback. He holds up his hand to just like kind of give me like a halt motion. Oh, yeah, I'll bring my horse to a halt. Um, yeah, I'll comply. Are they dressed properly? They what are dressed properly. They, they, look, uh, they look quite official. The, the one who put up his hand, he's, he's an older gentleman. He's got, like, gray hair. It's uh, like a salt and pepper gray. And he rides forward. He's got a real stern look on his face. Uh, where are you coming from? Uh, okay, so... Uh, Did we catch the name of that inn? Or tavern. Um, you did. It was mentioned last session. I, I, I I'll find it here. It's like the the hanged nail. The or hanged something. man. The hooded man. The, the hooded, hooded man. man hooded man. That sounds right. No. Oh, where are you headed? Where are you coming from? <laughs> Anywhere but from there. It seems uh, mutants had taken over that inn. Uh, look over at Kozel. The hanged man, the hooded man, the hooded man. The hooded like, man. they they tried to like eat us, man. Mutants, he says, and he looks at the group of them, and they kind of clutch their blades. What? What are you talking? One what of them you... was masquerading as a warden. I described the guy actually. Yeah, he, you okay? You describe him in details. I'm uh, 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 his I, name was Hans. <laughs> you're no longer throwing up, Waldo. But you're, Waldo, you've passed out from the pain at this point. Oh, uh, okay. You uh, just write me out of the story. Yes. Yeah, right. All right. Well, <laughs> maybe Sandell leans over and he elbows you to wake you up when uh, when the wardens arrive. There you go. <laughs> and he elbows you. He goes, uh, "There's no, there's no haunts in this area. We don't have any wardens by that name." Where did you say you came from? Mutants. What wait, you, uh, you survived mutants? What, what are you talking about? Did you kill these mutants? Wait, wait, good sir. So there's no Hans in your company. How about I describe the dead man? 
Oh, the one we saw up in the yeah. stables. Yeah. Now keep in mind that Sandow's a storyteller, so I mean he should have a good eye for description. Sure, you give a, a summer description. He goes, ah, that could be that could be anyone. I don't know. What what region, what area did you see uh, you came from again? The hooded man. That uh, way. <laughs> yeah, yeah, we've got a couple of guys over there. They 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 guard the ferry, uh, crosses the river over there. I dare say that your men are no longer amongst the living if they were anywhere near that place. Yeah, man. It was just the mutants, man. There was the guy with the spider legs and the kid with the big eyes. Spider legs? What sort of heresy is this? I don't know, man. It wasn't right. Show us. Man. Accompany us. Show us what you're talking of. Nope. No, thank you. (laughs) We are not going back in that direction. Walter just leans up, (laughs) raises his head. No. Lowers his head back down. Don't eat the custard. On a scale of 1 to 10, man, that's a bad fucking idea. (laughs) He says, you will accompany us and show us what you're speaking of, or you'll be thrown in prison. You know what? Just just take Blort. He'll show you where to go, and we'll keep going. (laughs) Well, oh. seeing as you are wardens serving to protect travelers on this road, we'll show you, but we're not leading. <laughs> you, yeah, uh, man. Are definitely more astute with those blades than we are. So why don't you go forward and we'll show you? <laughs> uh, yeah, I mean, I'll turn the horse in the direction. And it's like, sure, you go the, first, though. <laughs> how about they, they kind of surround you? There's four of them in total. So there's two in front of you sure. and two that go behind you. So you guys I'm are like in the that. middle of the pack. <laughs> And you're riding down the road and you're riding for hours and they're, they're, they're questioning you. They're kind of, they're asking questions. So where did you come from before this? Look, can I, um, can I use my charm skill to kind of try and make them less suspicious of us by you know, <laughs> be, being more open and gregarious with them? Uh, let's see. You can attempt to, um, but they're rather, they're rather curious with all this talk of mutants and such that you speak. Oh, no, sure. I'll play on that. I'll play on that. Great. But I'm, uh, I'm, I'm trying to get them to kind of trust us more. Well, we got, we've got a kind of what I do, Matt. Don't take this from me. (laughs) All right. All right. All right. Go ahead. You saw how bad his melee was. All right. Give him this. uh, Yeah. I'll let you make me a test. Uh, Okay. Are they of a lower social class than Sandow? Yes. Okay. They all are. Because Sandow uh, is You're an aristocrat. Yes. They're all of a lower class. You're trying to what? Charm them? Yes. So it'll be a challenging charm roll. Okay, I get a plus 20 since they are of a lower class. Yes, there you go. <laughs> so, yeah. Yeah, they're all they're they're listening to every word. They're hanging on every word as you as you say it. So, what are you what are you saying to them? What are you you're trying to to Oh, no, this this is what I do. Like I'm painting the story of our our heroic escape. <laughs> From the hooded man. <laughs> okay. And how we believe that they've been overran uh, by mutants. Uh, this that... is the new Beowulf. Yeah, yeah. So they're 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 believing what you have to say, uh, but they're getting they're like, where 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 did you come from? Where were you before this? Oh yeah, what's the name of the city we were just from? Warburg. 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 Yeah. Warburg. I'm the hero. How yeah. do you forget that? Yeah. <laughs> Uh, yeah. I just I wake up from consciousness. I'm the hero of Vorberg. Yes, we to... <laughs> uh, we we did uh, several significant uh, things in the town. Uh, Waldo here. They, Waldo is being hailed as the hero of Vorberg. They say, "Nah, I never heard of you." They failed their folklore test. Nah, we've never heard of you. Heroes You're killing me, Matt. We've never heard of you. No, no, just him, just Waldo, not us. They, yeah, they, rolled, they rolled a ninety-five for their folklore. They totally, they totally Let failed. someone know me. Let someone know me. Ah, we're, your, we're from another of your misfortune for that reroll, man. We're from another region. <laughs> sure, I'll give it. I'll, I'll give that to him because he, he wants it so bad. I will spend one of my misfortune. Uh, we're almost at the end of the session, anyways. 
100 critical fail. Oh. They really don't know. They're like, now they're, now they're suspicious again. Who's that what city? Man? He's a hero. What city? What? That city doesn't exist. What? <laughs> what is Ever heard of in my life. Why, why is he I am so up? upset. Is he, a, is he a mutant? What are you covering up? No, man. Like, he just had some bad pudding, man. <laughs> bad pudding, huh? <laughs> so you guys continue on down the road for hours. They've heard that one before. They're, they're scrutinizing you, and they're trying to find holes in your story. And you guys come up on the walled inn again. Uh, and it looks like it is um, the outside, at least. You guys are riding up on the walls. is in the same condition you left it in the night before. The The door that Sandow smashed down is lying on the ground. It looks like nobody bothered to prop it back up and repair it after you guys sped out of there in the middle of the night. And uh, as you round the corner and you, you go in through the door... The uh, the road wardens right away draw their blades. And they're, My gods! And you guys come around the corner. And you see also that there are two bodies lying face down in the in the mud with big pools of blood. You see the landlord, the big fat landlord, is lying there, and so was the so the supposed road warden. Uh oh! What happened? Careful, here last wardens! Night? There are more they, bodies here. They turn to you. What happened here? How do we know you aren't responsible for this? Uh, hey, I showed them my blade. <laughs> and I, I literally handed your, them my blade. Your, your two-handed blade what, that has blood on it from the night before? <laughs> from stabbing <laughs> that kid under the door? I had I hand the blade and say, go, go observe the corpse. And you tell me if that damage was caused by this blade. Come on. This was not Come the on. right move. Look at him. This was not the right move. <laughs> Remember, there is a corpse upstairs that was killed by this plane. <laughs> uh, <coughs> sure. They, they're they like, get get down off your horses. Get down off your horses right now and get up against the wall. And they, one of them rides over, grabs the blade from you, snatches it out of your hands. And Am I capable of standing at this point? Um, You're kind or of... Or am I still just like heaved over on yeah, the horse. Yeah, you're you're huddled over and you're leaning on the wall and you're you're in really wa- rough wa- really rough shape Waldo. Um <laughs> uh, and they're like you st- you stay there and he the 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 lead road warden the one with the salt and pepper hair commands two of his men to go in and while the two of them stand out there and and watch the group of you and they're questioning like what took place here last night? What happened? You were you were in quite a hurry when we ran into you in the road. We've been telling you the same story for the last three or four hours. Should we go over it again? If so, there's a nice fire in there we can sit next to. <laughs> you can hear insight. You're dear God. And you, uh, after some time, the two wardens come back out and they're dragging a body and they toss a body out into the mud and it's lying there. And, um, does he have one bulging eye? No, no, he actually has a skull for a face, for a head. I don't remember Sorry. seeing that guy. Yeah. No, you, you didn't run into this guy. Like, oh, <laughs> we found him down in the basement. There's some sort of some sort of horrible ceremony took place last night. There's all kinds of strange markings and blood everywhere. There's we found two more people down there, and this this thing, this abomination down there dead as well. Did I mention they eat people? You said you found two other people? Two other people. And there's another body up on the second floor. What did the two people downstairs look like, man? Stop with your questions, murderer! Oh, man. You think we did all of this? You were in quite a rush when we ran into you on the road last night. Uh, Sir, sir, please. And and I kind of, I strike a pose. (laughs) If you will endeavor... To admire my wardrobe, you'll see not a single fleck of blood. (laughs) (laughs) It was raining last night. How convenient. (laughs) I feel like they got us on this one, guys. (laughs) Yeah. Let's hope they don't find the body in the attic of the stables, man. Do you say that out loud? <laughs> yeah. <They're> like, <laughs> What's more bodies in the attic? <laughs> yeah, man. That's the one the spider guy was eating, man. <laughs> the, the lead warden's like, points to another one. Get in the stables. There's another. They just informed us of another body in there. 
So a guy many... scuttles up and a bunny many... he yells, Ah! I can confirm his story. There's another one dead up here. How many wardens are guarding us right now? There are three wardens on you. One of them ran. But how many are in the basement? How many are up in the attic of the Oh, they barn? came back. They came back. Came so back. there's three oh. standing in front of you and he ordered one to the uh, to the stables. Oh shit, man. Didn't uh <laughs> How much animal lard you got? <laughs> <laughs> Didn't Han say there was more in the... Uh... Where did they say they put those bandit bodies, man? They said they put them in the stables. No, they put them in the stables, man. <laughs> <laughs> the, uh, the, the the lead warden comes over and he's, 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 got, uh, he's got shackles and uh, he's going to cuff you guys one by one and says you're you're coming in for questioning does he have halfling size shackles he or does, does he not. have ogre size shackles he has he has kozel size shackles <laughs> oh and there's three of them here <laughs> there's three in front of you yes so are kozel they, is the other on one horse? being shackled uh no they're not on horses they're on foot right now and so are we yeah you guys and are kozel is the, the only one that can actually be shackled at this point Mm. well yeah because they're man-sized shackles i guess you're too small and sando's too large oh man <laughs> sorry buddy oh man i want to <laughs> as i see him coming towards i want to try and covertly <laughs> slip my hand <laughs> into, into my pocket <laughs> It'll, i need to get a little vaseline here man lube it up <laughs> All right, so uh, yeah, so you you do it, and he drops to the ground, and drops the shackles. He's like, "Oh, my feet just came from below me, underneath. What what witchery is at play here?" Oh man, you should be careful, mutants, man. Conforting with mutants, and now I can't stand on my own two feet. Oh. I'm gonna fall down too, and start acting like he cast the spell on me as well. I'm gonna run. <laughs> 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 the old man is gonna run. <laughs> I ain't getting what caught. What have we gotten ourselves into? <laughs> oh. Can I at least hop on my horse and ride that horse? <laughs> oh my god. Good uh, luck, Kozel. I can't follow you. Just imagine this old I can't man follow where you're pocket, going. <laughs> covering his hand in lard and just like running as fast as he can, which is like slow speed for a normal man. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you'll never take me. Oh man, I need to do it in the Koza voice. Like you'll never take me alive, Warden. <laughs> if it wasn't for you, like meddling kids. <laughs> oh, you're oh. so much harder on yourself, Kozel. <laughs> <laughs> I've got priors, man. <laughs> <laughs> Kozel's been around the look, man. I'm holding right now, man. <laughs> oh, my God. oh i love you so much oh you're gonna you you okay you you start to run and one of them raises a crossbow right away and says halt oh i'll put um, one Sandow hand up in like the air to, uh, to, to to accidentally <laughs> trip and uh <laughs> jostle that crossbowman <laughs> And I'm I'm still on the ground pretending like he cast a spell on me too. Yes. I, I'm flailing and moaning as loud as possible, as distracting as possible. Kozel, are you gonna stop running? Uh, I'll stop and Hold. I'll put I'll put a hand up in the air and slip my other hand back <laughs> into my oh. oh, I'm gonna die. Lord would be proud. <laughs> Lord would throw himself in front of the crossbow. Yeah, he would. <laughs> he so would. let me guess. And he drops as well, the crossbow man. <laughs> Only one of them's up. <laughs> All right, so the, the lead road warden is like, what is happening? And he turns. So, Sando, you start to lean forward with your arm out. And all of a sudden, the crossbow guy just drops right in, next to you. <laughs> And he, he's on he's in the mud and he drops his crossbow. It lands at your feet because that is part of falling prone is that you drop whatever you... Or no, that's part of the spell is that he drops whatever mm -hmm. he's carrying, right? 
Mm -hmm. So there's a crossbow lying at your feet now. <laughs> Is this how you died earlier? <laughs> no. <laughs> uh, um... No, I it was really close to this, yeah. Say, Chuck has played this adventure before, and I can guarantee it did not play out this way. <laughs> um, so uh. that leaves the, the the head warden is there, and he draws his sword. He's got a mortuary sword, and he says, Stop right now! He just I'm shuts running. out. <laughs> oh, it's oh, running it's, it, is, it is loaded. It is loaded. Too old to twitch. I am going to keep the crossbow guy preoccupied by offering a hand up <laughs> so that he doesn't go for the crossbow you see all right so uh, let me a, help you there you hold out a hand all right yeah so he takes your hand to to get back up and i'm just wailing on the ground okay. oh <laughs> no oh woe is me i'm really sorry about this gentleman uh you see kozel has this thing about authority uh abused as a child i believe spent too much time in prison <laughs> <laughs> Why don't my legs work? The, the chat really wants me to roll uh, a misfortune for a misfire to see if the bolt shoots into you, Sandow. <laughs> <sighs> They're just That's cruel. They that are is cruel. That is cruel. <laughs> chat is cruel. No, we're not going to do that. So, uh, uh, Kozel, they shout halt, and, and Sando oh. helps up the one that you just dropped to the ground. You turn around, you see this, and you're kind of standing there. You got your arms up. Like, what do you want to do? You're next to a oh. horse. You're going to try and get on the horse? Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. All right. After so I drop crossbow guy, I'm <laughs> so you got a horse. So the lead one now has his, his sword drawn. He's shouting, halt, halt, old man. <laughs> Definitely not halting. <laughs> <laughs> moving targets harder to hit <laughs> oh my god just uh if they chase i'm gonna make that horse drop everything it's carrying and fall prone <laughs> oh man so you so kozel just despite the warnings to stop and halt kozel just books it out of the gate <laughs> you assume this is the last you've seen of kozel your friend kozel <laughs> He's got priors. I don't blame him. <laughs> <laughs> the lead warden hops on his horse and commands another, the, the first one that you dropped to get on a horse as well, and commands the other two to stay back and uh, and watch the, th the three of you, because Blort's there. And they uh, <laughs> they chase after you on horseback, Kozel. Um, <laughs> well, we're, at our, we're at the end of our session here. <laughs> um that's the two hour mark even those started late uh but that's a hell of a cliffhanger for next time yeah <laughs> oh kozel i love you kozel on horseback being pursued by two road wardens where uh, and um and yeah, I, thought you got Hill music. I do need benny if i wasn't going to get a hit on twitch i would be playing it trust me there you go um wow we gotta wait two weeks to come back to this yeah well let's just play next week then you guys are god <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> oh no, I can't play next week. He can't. No. He's too busy get us running into the situation, but you won't get us out. <laughs> yeah, right. Oh, I thought you guys were going to run with me. <laughs> nope. I, I am Sandow's, almost incapacitated. <laughs> Sandow is an aristocrat. Come on, the, the the guards are just going to let him go after his family pays a bribe. I mean, what are you running oh, for? <laughs> very entertaining <laughs> scene, gentlemen. You guys are getting. I don't think I can physically here. run, to be Hold honest. <laughs> this this group here, if you want the most entertaining Zweihander games, this is the group for it. Um, <laughs> that's why my tweet this morning said the wacky adventures, <laughs> the continuing <laughs> wacky adventures. So we're not going to be back to continue this until the 17th is when we're going to pick this up. Maybe we'll have a Blort, maybe we won't. I'm sure if Blort was here tonight, things would have played out much differently. Oh, ooh, very much so. <laughs> much, much differently. But uh, that was interesting. You guys uh, essentially skirted past and uh, avoided the whole conclusion of that module. Uh, all the times <laughs> I have played and ran Night of Blood, we've never made it down into the basement really and the first time i ran it they made it to the basement and they encountered the thing in the basement yeah. i didn't know there was a basement you guys never explored you know i was assuming you'd leave your room and you go like look around and i mean to be fair i was incapacitated but you do you did eat you, you did eat four <laughs> helpings of uh poisoned custard um, how was i supposed to know it was poison matt because True. the guy was so damn excited yeah, to give it right. to you <laughs> 
I thought it was just really good. Like he was proud of it. <laughs> so you guys really didn't gain any corruption today because the people and things you were facing were bad guys. So stabbing people in the face and things like that, you weren't really doing anything bad to innocent people. And that's why corruption was not being handed out and flowing freely tonight because everybody was essentially a bad guy that you were encountering. So you guys got off the hook without doing, well, well you know, this road warden thing, actually. Now yeah, that I think that's about what it, I was going to. This whole warden thing. These guys are, are legit wardens. So Kozel, yeah. you've done one, two. Let me get up my little handy. Uh, well, that was just like. Chart. But self-preservation? Non-lethal <laughs> damage, you know? That, he wasn't really hurting him. That's true, but I don't know. He, I This, no, I would I, yeah. I'd see what he's doing here. This is definitely a corruption, a corruptible offense. Um, Assaulting the innocent. Uh, the innocent? <laughs> is that yeah. really assault? He didn't touch him. <laughs> I will give you... I'll meet you in the middle, and it'll be five corruption for tonight. So go ahead and roll and see where that puts you on the track. Are you going to move down the track? Or am I going to move up the track? Uh, no, nope. I move up the track. Up the track. All right. The rest of you didn't gain any corruption. You guys didn't really do anything bad to any innocent people. Innocent. You stabbed and killed bad guys, and that's not a corruptible offense. Even though he was a, a lad. A young lad. Um, yeah, you guys avoided big pork pieces of this. But you guys are now in a pickle. Thanks to... <laughs> Do I roll the lose corruption? Uh, well, you have no. like you guys have zero. So you're not going to... like. There's no point. I gained a chaos rank last session. You would. Well, um... your, your chaos ranks will stay. Yes. Since okay. you guys did not gain a chaos rank tonight, you'll move a step closer to... Or you'll move up. You'll get an order rank. You get an order rank automatically. But my chaos rank anything. stays there. Your chaos yeah. rank will stay there until you get 10. And then once you get 10, then you start looking at like mutations and things like that. Once you get 10 order ranks, you get another fate point. Yeah. Oh, cool. So yes, uh, Sando and Waldo, you both move up one to the positive on your, to getting a fate point. And uh, Kozel is moving towards becoming one of the mutants. No, I went up. Oh, you went up. Okay. So you're not, I rolled under. You're not moving closer towards becoming one of these mutants inhabiting nope. an inn in the middle of a dark stormy night. So I just have to get poisoned more often so I can get order ranks. That's it. Oh, you can't gain right. corruption if you can't do anything. <laughs> Notorious DMG landing page. Um, yeah, so thanks so much guys for playing. It was a lot of fun. It's always fun playing with you guys, either running Good session, sessions Matt. or playing. Good session. Things. Thank you. Uh, yeah. you, keep, you keep me on my toes and I appreciate it. I love you for it. Um, what's the next thing we have going on with Notorious MG? We're supposed to do a recording this Saturday of a podcast, but I don't know what's going on with that. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Supposed to do behind the screen Saturday the 5th, <laughs> but what time? I don't know. We all forgot it's happening or well, two of some us of us did. Two of us did. Uh, um, I sh I've shown up for the last three recordings for behind the screen and I've been one of two people that did that. So behind the screen is yeah. a, a, uh, how, how would we describe it? It follows you... no timeline. It is a, whenever yeah, we record, yeah. want to record an episode yeah. we do. And it's just a group of us, a group of four or five GM sitting around asking and talking GM questions and, uh, yeah. going over subjects and topics. So, um, Oh, well, Dustin's Dustin, off. yeah, hey, maybe. There if we go. We we might have... if, Dust, if... Dustin, Burton, and Steven are for sure in. If we do it late, I can be there. If it's late, I can do it as well. But, like, late is, like, really late. Like, I don't know. Any time after 9 is good for me. 9 Central. I was going to say, after 10 Central, like, when I've done Mutant Year Zero on Saturday, I could probably hop on and do it. I'll wrap them up at, at like, 10-ish or 9-ish. I can do that. Oh, there you go. Dust City can be there latest also. Well, look at that. It just might happen. Notorious DMG. Go to the Notorious DMG we'll uh, Twitch channel, and we're going to do a live uh, behind the screen. 10 Central works. Okay, done. We got to figure it out. Uh, I'm going to be bloody exhausted, but <laughs> we got to come up with some subjects now, gentlemen. We're uh, just going to talk about the games we played. We're good. 
All right. Notorious DMG uh, is the channel here on Twitch. And uh, we'll do behind the screen. There'll be a whole bunch of us there. It'll be fun. Uh, Chuck, what do you got going on this week on your channel? Uh, this week we are continuing on, it's just tomorrow night, uh, our D&D 5e campaign, Blades and Pepper Shakers. Uh, this is DM'd by Joe, and I play the gnome asshole wizard, uh, Reen Cleese, who has a penchant for close-up, you know, magic David Blaine kind of shit <laughs> with pepper shakers. Uh, and that's it. Next Friday, we're back with more Zweihander. Yep. That's right. Defenders of Cobalt. Yeah. Steven. All good stuff. Next video will be Saturday with you guys. All right. How about the next <laughs> Steven the DM original? I got something down the pipeline, but I'm not ready to reveal it yet. All right. It, well, it's I'm something not, big, though. I'm not you give away your secrets. Just, uh, yeah. Just give them away. <laughs> Steven the DM on YouTube. Bert, what do you got going on in your games? Oh, well, I'm finishing up uh, a rebroadcast of our Delta Green on my podcast, but we have BX Classics box set Dungeons and Dragons going on. We've got some Dresden files with Fate Accelerated going on and uh, Indiana Jones, the original TSR version done as a pulp noir vigilante city game that's ending up being quite fun awesome uh, going on as well that sounds great got to get that harrison ford point in there mm-hmm. yeah. um what do i got tomorrow night i'm doing more is why hander on the channel uh we're doing character creation live and then we're going to do a short little uh one shot that's tomorrow night at um I don't know. 9 p.m. Central. <laughs> Too many games. And then um, Saturday night, I'm running Mutineer Zero for the Grim and Perilous uh, folks. People who work for the studio or are involved with uh, Grim and Perilous uh, games. We're doing uh, an ongoing Mutineer Zero campaign. And this will be session two. That is at 7.30 Central Time. We're starting at a weird time. Don't ask me. Uh, and then apparently right after that, you can find me on Notorious DMG doing Behind the Screen. And then Sunday night, wow. Uh, Sunday night, I am running Zweihander again. And we are going to do the first part of... I'm going to grab it right here. I have the printout. Uh, an on, a sh- five-part horror-themed Zweihander original adventure written by Sean Van Dam, who is uh, one of the, the content creators here in the community. And we're going to be doing episode one, titled Quoteth the Raven. So that is all coming for me in the next little bit. Uh, Thank you to everybody who joined us tonight. Thank you for the raid. And uh, we'll be back on the 17th to see what happens to these guys. I was going to say our heroes, but they're far from heroes. Yeah. I am the hero of Vorberg. You You take that back. Whatever that looks like. (laughs) All right. Good session, guys. Lots of fun. Have a great night, everybody. Thanks for joining us.